Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today I'm going to give you a tutorial on the brand new Lightroom CC. So the Lightroom CC is a new suite of applications. Well actually the mobile apps have kind of been there before and same with the Apple TV and the website. But what is new is the desktop app. It's a streamlined version that does most of the things that Lightroom does. Now there's a few things it can't do, namely things like curves, um, it can't do photo merge, HDR, panorama, and in fact here's a list right there of all the things that are not in there. So in this application, whatever device you take your photo from, that full resolution photo is uploaded into the cloud and then it's available from any one of your devices, from your phone, your tablet, your Apple TV, your desktop, and yes, even the web browser, you can go to lightroom.com and there's a link there and you can go in there and there's actually an application where all your photos are there and you can even edit them there. Make the change in one, ripples through all of them so you always have the latest version of your photograph. Now this is great for people on the go and people that don't want all their photographs locked away in a closet somewhere. They want them available wherever they are. So let's look at some of the features in here and uh, see what's brand new. Alright, so let's have a look right now and see what we can do with Lightroom CC. So let's start on the desktop and as we can see there we've got all our photos showing in this nice view here. Now we could change that to regular grid just by clicking there. But let's stay with this kind of cool view. Now let's go into our folders. If we click there we can see the different albums that we've created. And let's go into the teaching album and let's use this as an example. Here's a shot that I did of Lena. And it needs a little bit of work. Notice all the studio lighting is kind of in there. Let's get rid of that. Let's choose the healing brush and then we're just going to paint with that just around those areas where the lighting equipment showing. And there we go, we're done. And so we've finished making that adjustment right there. Now, if we look onto our mobile phone and we give it a second to sync, then it's actually going to sync and those adjustments are going to be right here on the mobile phone. And the same with the tablet. The tablet is also going to pick up those changes. Alright, so maybe we want to do something else like we're going to jump in here right now and I'm going to make some more adjustments. So let me go in here and I'm just going to do some brightness a little bit and just kind of play around with some of the exposure settings here. Like maybe recover the highlights a little bit, actually maybe recover them a lot. Open up the shadows a little, punch the whites, the blacks, give us some contrast. And um, maybe we're just going to the color balance and push it into the blues. Just so we can kind of see a big difference. Okay, maybe just for fun now, I'm going to make some adjustments. And just kind of playing around with that. And so I've just made some adjustments right there. Okay, and now we go back to our laptop. And we can see on the screen here that our adjustments have been kind of pushed through. Now we can, you know, readjust this later if we want, you know, we can touch all these up. And the other thing that's kind of cool is if we close this down, we have a lot of other options in here and a lot of these options you might be familiar with. In fact, let's just have a look. I'm just going to show you. We've got all of these and you can see all those options. We can do cropping, we've got brushing, we've got localized adjustments, we've got all the good stuff that you like and you're used to. So let's look at a different example. So let's go maybe here, we're going to open up some photos in there. And why don't we open this one just for fun. And then we can grab our gradient tool and just kind of click and drag and make our adjustments on there. Take it to about there. Let's take our highlights down a little bit. Open up our shadows a little bit. And of course, you know, we can look at the before and the after and we can see we've made the adjustments on there. So all these kind of tools that you're used to are right there. If we look at the different things we can sort them here by some different things by ratings. We can also sort them by capture date etc. We can also do all our stars and all that kind of stuff. We can view them different ways and you can show the original or the other one and if we look in here the film strip we can hide that we can show it. We've also got presets so if you love the presets, we can go down here, we can look and see how they affect it. In fact, let's go back to something a little more interesting for the presets. It's this one, and let's go and have a look at some of our presets. So if we click on the presets there, we can see what these are going to look like. And of course, you know, we've got all of these ones, the creative ones, that will come here with 
Lightroom CC, the black and whites, all that good stuff. Components, you know, we can do cross dissolves, all these kind of things. And of course, we've got our user preset, so I'm able to create my own. In fact, let me show you a better example of that. Maybe we'll give this picture of the drone here. And let's go in there. And we can look at some of the, you know, the different looks that I've been able to get with that. And of course, if we want, you know, we can make our own and we can just quite easily just click on there, create presets, we can save our own. We can do all our filtering. But now this is where stuff gets really good. Is let's look at all the photos here. What it does is it's actually using artificial intelligence, which is Sensei, which is Adobe's AI. And what that does is it analyzes photos and it's able to do a lot of smart things. Like we can search for people and search and it's actually looking in to the photos and it's analyzing these photos and it can quite literally tell, you know what, these are the photos with people in it. So it's actually that smart. Let's try something else. Let's test it a little bit. Let's try car. See if it can pick out the one with the cars in it. Yep. Okay. So there we go. Look at that. We've got cars on the outside and on the inside. You know, it's not perfect. I'm on a plane there. It thinks it's a car, but that's definitely um, a good start. So we can do a lot of things like maybe we could try something else. I don't know. Boat. I don't even know if I have a picture of a boat on here, but let's have a look and see what we've got. Let it search. Yep. Look at that. We've got boats in there. Um, let's try one more just for fun. Let's try tree and see if I can pick up a tree. And there we go. There's all the pictures of the tree. What you want to do is grab Lightroom CC and Lightroom CC is absolutely. And if, if you hear that noise outside, that's my neighbors. It just seems that the moment I decide to start recording every single child within a hundred miles comes running and they put on their best scream and their best cry just for the video. If I want to choose Lightroom web, so say for example, you don't have, um, maybe you're traveling, you don't have your phone. Um, well, you probably would have your phone, but maybe you don't have your phone. <laughs> maybe you don't have your tablet or a computer and all you have is a web browser. Maybe you're in a cyber cafe. You can log into the web browser and look right here. This is browser based and look at this. There's my photos. Let me click on the teaching and all the adjustments I made on that photo are right there. Okay, so I could be on here and I could open any photograph I want and then I can choose edit this photo. The editing tools are going to load. Notice right now this is inside a web browser. So this is lightroom.adobe.com and of course you can just log in with your creative cloud uh, username and password and look at this. You have access here to the full resolution image and you can make adjustments right here within your browser. And those adjustments are going to update with all your devices. So what it's doing is it's updating those photos that are stored in the cloud. So you don't have to worry about backing them up. They're all there. Now there's different types of plans that give you different amounts of storage. I talked about that on a different video. So anyway, let me tell you what I plan on doing with this. I'm keeping all my photos, you know, my thousands and tens of thousands of photos that I've taken with my DSLR, with my drone over the years. And I'm keeping all of those on my hard drive and backup drives. And I'm going to be using Lightroom Classic with that. Now I'm going to have certain collections like maybe I'm traveling and I want my mobile pictures with my phone, with my iPad, whatever. Those ones I'm going to be taking and I'm going to be sharing those with that library. I'm also going to put other photos that maybe I, I like to show off like maybe my hundred favorite photos. I'm going to put on there too. So wherever I am, I'm able to share those photos with other people and make tweets to them if I like. I'm also going to put on a folder there that you saw was teaching. I'm going to start loading that up with different photographs. So when I'm out on the road and I'm speaking at conferences and events, all the photos I need are going to be right there and I'm going to have access to them. And there's one other thing to this, a little bit more advanced. I don't want to confuse you because I'm going to do a whole new video on this. But if you have Lightroom Classic or Lightroom 6, you can choose to sync from one computer you can sync to the cloud. Don't sync your entire catalog, your entire library. What you want to do is just create a collection, which I've called uh, mobile or something like that. I forget what it's called. Actually, I called it Lightroom CC mobile or something like that. Anyway, so I created that collection. I'm going to drag in the photos that I want to sync. And those photos will actually bridge or fork in here 
I fork, I said with an R, in here with the collection into Lightroom CC. And those photos are also going to be available on Lightroom CC. And as an advantage, if I make adjustments on those in the cloud, it's actually going to come back to those photos inside, those synced ones inside of Lightroom Classic are also going to stay up to date. So that's another really cool thing. One other thing too with Lightroom CC, if you right click and open in Photoshop, you can make all your Photoshop adjustments. And even if you add layers, it will create a secondary file, which is going to be a PSD with all the layers in it. And that will also live in Lightroom Classic. So there's a lot of different things you can do. I just wanted to give you a little bit of an introduction. And one of the things I plan on doing in the future is creating a full course on a Lightroom CC. I'm going to update my training to Lightroom Classic. I have the Lightroom 6 training right now. So if you don't want to go to the cloud, you can buy Lightroom 6, stay there. Also Lightroom Classic will keep you on your desktop, all your files are on your desktop, the programs on the desktop, but you can only get it through a subscription. If you want to buy a perpetual license, which means pay once, have it forever, you have to buy Lime Room 6. That's the last one that's going to be on that plan. I'm sorry guys, but that's how it is. Once again, check out my other videos and I will explain the reasoning and all that kind of stuff behind it. So anyway, I feel like I'm leaning more and more over here. I'm going to fall off the screen in a second. So anyway, guys, I hope you liked this. I hope you gave you an introduction to Lightroom CC and you get some kind of an idea. Maybe this is the kind of workflow you're looking for where you want to have your photos everywhere, wherever you are. You're always going to have the latest version. You're always going to have access depends you know how you're working and what is right for you so look into these different solutions i hope you like this tutorial if you did smash that like button into dust and by the way if you like these kind of reviews tutorials tech things sometimes i get off the track check out subscribe right now hit the subscribe button add a comment let's get a discussion going until next time i'll see you at the cafe